Welcome to the She Rise Podcast. I'm your host, Jaya Rose, a spiritual lifestyle and business mentor, and I am here to help ambitious, highly sensitive women just like you and me embody unshakable confidence in your gifts and create a scalable business that nourishes you and gives you the freedom lifestyle your soul craves. Ready? Let's get started. Hey, welcome back to the podcast. I am Jaya Rose, your host, and today I'm going to be talking about collaborating with people you admire. And this is something that happens in the online space a lot, but in sort of a not collaborating way. (laughs) And I'll tell you what I mean. But specifically in this podcast, I'm going to break down a few ways that you can start to collaborate with people who you admire because you know, this isn't about looking up to somebody and putting them on a pedestal and being fangirls. It's about actually, you know, expanding your sphere of influence and putting yourself in a position to align with people who are in alignment with your next level. Let's be honest, when we are growing and shifting and expanding, we change who we want to be around. And I don't know if you've experienced this, but I sure have, where I've outgrown so many relationships because of new dreams, because of bigger dreams. And not everybody is going to align with that. So it can feel a little challenging, like a big gap between where you are now or where you've been to where you're going. And we need people, we need support And one thing that happens in the online space is it's so easy to look at somebody and say, oh, they have what I desire. They are doing what I want to do. And so let me try to kind of get something from them. And I think that most often that's how it's looked at. And I can resonate. I know that when I first started in the online space, I got starstruck from people who were really doing big things. I was like, oh my gosh, wow, this is crazy. Look at them. I wish they'd be my friend. And it doesn't work that way. I mean, the online space is no different than any social atmosphere. You don't just make somebody be your friend just because you like them, right? There needs to be commonality. There needs to be stakes and we need to invest. So I'm going to tell you a few things that have worked for me and also things that haven't worked. So I'm going to start with the haven't worked part. And that is this piece of wanting to just get something from somebody because they have something you want. And I don't, you know, I'm going to assume that this is not you, but maybe it is. And I will tell you that at the very beginning of my online career, I reached out to a few people sort of like, hey, do you want to put my stuff in front of your people? And that did not work. And I learned really quickly. So we all go through this phase at some point. And It's this phase of let me reach out to somebody and just see if they want to collaborate with me. And this is going to sound funny because what am I talking about is what I'm talking about is collaborating, but you don't actually want to say those words. So when I receive a message from somebody who follows my work, but I have not followed their work nor engaged with them off of my stuff, right? Meaning like they're coming to my Facebook post, they're coming to my Facebook live. And that's great. You know, that is a real relationship, but it's not appropriate for them to reach out to me and say, hi, I just am wondering if you want to collaborate. Let's do something together. I love your work. Um, Because let's assume that there's more than one person that feels that way about me. Let's assume that when you're being visible and you're really showing up, that you have an audience. And if everybody in that audience wants to collaborate with you, and I do kind of in quotes, but they're not meeting you halfway, especially, meaning they don't really have an audience. So what they really mean is, I would like to get in front of your audience and have you help me think of some ways to do that. (laughs) Now that's what it feels like because they're not really bringing anything to the table. And this is a huge distinction between what actual collaboration is. Collaboration means that you're both putting in. And I've had so many people reach out and and just sort of say, like, either buy something from me or get and put me in front of your audience or um, 
ask for free advice. Now, these things are obviously not efforts to collaborate, but I think there's a gray area in between just asking for something and actually offering something. So we want to stay away from offering anything that is less than a complete win-win scenario. Now, I'm going to break down a few of these things for you, but just to drive this point home, it's really important that it doesn't look like you're just trying to get in front of their audience and take from them. Because like I said, people are getting this all the time. Anybody with an audience of any size is used to people wanting their attention. And if you seem like a person like that, that just wants their attention, you will be categorized in a, not in a way that's really beneficial for you. So what I mean is, not in a way that it looks like your peers, right? And this is huge because what we're doing is we want to position ourselves as a peer, as somebody who has value to contribute. And we have to earn that in a lot of ways. So I'm hoping you're picking up what I'm putting down here, that it's really, really important to position it in the right way when you're wanting to reach out to somebody who has an audience and who is in a position of influence. So a couple ways to do this is one, to have something of value. And I'll tell you what a few things are. It's really, really important to know that you are offering something and that's the way to set up a win-win. So the times that I have reached out to people who I admire, I've never said, will you just get on a call with me? Oh yeah, I should mention this. This is a really not okay. Don't ask somebody to get on a call with you because that is not a win-win. They have no idea why that's valuable to them. And this happens a lot. Like, let's just connect and get tea. And here's the truth. I don't know you. Why would I connect with you and have tea? That's crazy. Um, but from somebody's standpoint who follows you or follows me, it, lo- it feels to them like they know you, right? So you might feel like you really know somebody, but you got to remember that they don't know you. <laughs> so a few things that you can offer people that are valuable is, is an audience. I mean, an audience is commodity, right? This is the commodity that is the most valuable thing in the online space, particularly a- an engaged audience who trusts you. So even if you don't have a big audience, it's okay. And it would be totally fine to message somebody. Like for example, if I got a message from you and you have 300 people in your online Facebook group and you messaged me and said, hi Jaya, I love your work. I'm in your Facebook group and I've seen how much value you give. I love when you talk about X, Y, or Z. I'm wondering if you would be willing to come into my Facebook group and do a masterclass on whatever it is. I have a group of 300 people and they are engaged with me. You know, you can say a little bit about the type of people and then you can say, I'd be happy for you to offer something free or a low, even, you know, a low offer like offer something that's a digital program or something so that you're saying, Hey, I have an audience. I want you to come in, even though it's not huge, you could come into my group and do something of value for them so that they can benefit. And then of course that benefits me right now. This is probably overlooked a lot. Like you might think, well, I only have 100 people or 300 people in a group. Ah, you know, is it valuable? And if you position it like it's valuable, then it is. And see, this is the thing is that it's about creating a relationship. So that's a really beautiful foot in the door. And if the audience was really aligned and they said, yeah, and you're welcome to offer your messaging that sells program or I'd be like, cool. I mean, even if that's 10 people, even if I benefit 10 people and three people buy my $150 program. I mean, is that worth it to me? Probably. So then what happens is, if that's a really good interaction, then I'll be like, cool, I know them. Then they comment on my stuff, and and we're all of a sudden buddies, right? And if it builds, and we have a true connection, then I would totally be 
potentially friends with that person. Such a different angle than, hey, you want to collaborate sometime on something vague? (laughs) That honestly, that's so annoying to hear. And it's just automatically draining because it's not bringing anything to the table. So you can see how it's just a shift in positioning. Other things that are super valuable are podcasts. So if you've been thinking about starting a podcast, but you think you don't have a big enough audience, something really cool about that is that you can interview people who do have an audience and they're way more likely to interact with you and come be interviewed by you just because you have a podcast. They're not going to ask you how big is your audience. I mean, I've interviewed a number of people on the She Rise podcast and I didn't tell them how many people download. They never asked me that. They just said, okay, she has a podcast and, and she seems professional and reputable. So this is a really cool thing. It is an investment, you know, in time, energy, and money to create a podcast. So if you haven't done that yet, I would start with a Facebook group and creating an audience through Facebook lives and free masterclasses and three challenges and value and all of that first and then do a podcast, but you can still collaborate with people and have them come in, like I said, with just the Facebook group. So the podcast is the next level. And most people will say yes to you. I mean, if you're going for somebody who has a huge, huge audience, maybe they won't say yes. But that doesn't matter. They might eventually. And don't start there, right? Start with people who, this is more about creating those collaborations with people who you look up to and potentially want to be friends with. Okay, so the next level, I'm giving you three things here. The next level is having people come into your mastermind or paid groups. So people value people who pay. What that means is that if you message me and you did the whole, I have 300 people in my Facebook group, blah, da, 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 da. I know five people will get on live, but you instead come with, I have five people in a paid mastermind. These people are highly motivated and, and here's a little bit about them. Are you willing to come in and do a 30 minute masterclass? And I'd be happy for you to offer, you know, a a one-on-one consult with you or something higher value. This is a great way. And even if you're getting paid, so a lot of people have paid masterminds. If you're getting paid, it's totally worth it to say, Hey, I have a $500 budget for a guest to come in. Are you willing to come in? And, and this is again, Remember that this is about collaboration. So it's not to say you have to pay someone to collaborate, but if you offer to value their service and value their magic and what they're going to bring in, then they're going to pay attention. And that's the whole thing, right? It's like, how do you stand out and have someone pay attention to you? You bring value to them and you have something to offer them that not everyone else is, or at least just offer to them. So this is really cool because a lot of people will say yes to this. I mean, even people who you're like, oh my gosh, they have such a big following or they have such a big business. Excuse me. They may not, um, they may have time to do that. And that may be something they really love. Like I love teaching. That's one of my favorite things. So that's a turn on to me. If somebody's like, Hey, I have a mastermind. I'm wondering if you'll come in. I'm way more likely to consider that. Now, I might say, yes, um, I am selling into my impactful storytelling program right now. Is it okay if I make an offer? And they would most likely say yes. So that's a really important piece is just that you're giving the opportunity for them to leverage your audience, even if it's smaller than theirs. And then you never know. Maybe they're going to invite you on their podcast or they're going to invite you into their group or they're going to ask you to come on when they're hosting a summit or to be a guest speaker for something. So this is just so cool and see how it opens a doorway. Creating value for someone else is the fastest way to have them say yes to you and then for them to in return create value for you. And it's a huge gap. It's a huge missed opportunity for so many people. And I think a couple of the reasons are really just about feeling scared, you know, and being scared that someone's going to turn you down. So the reality is that a lot of people will turn you down, but most likely they'll just ignore you. (laughs) 
<laughs> so, hey, that's not so bad, right? We really need to heal those feelings of being rejected. And trust me, it's taken me a long time. I still sometimes get my feelings hurt when people don't buy stuff from me and I have to work through that. And it's just the reality, especially if you have abandonment issues, like my core wound from childhood is abandonment. And so this has taken a long time to be okay with putting something out there that made me feel uncomfortable, right? I went outside my comfort zone to say, hey, I have this group. Do you want to come in and, and do this? I want them to say yes and I want them to approve of me. That's just real talk. And so when they say no or they just ignore me, I've really had to work through those feelings. So I don't want to act like this is just nothing because a very masculine approach would do that, right? It would say, here's a strategy, do the strategy. Um, But I have a balanced approach, masculine and feminine. So yes, I just gave you some cool strategies. And I will also say, You will be uncomfortable if you haven't done something like this before. And even if you have done something like this, you um, may still be very uncomfortable. So another level of this, which I didn't talk about yet, is what my next step is. And that's to offer a free storytelling 101 class to people who have masterminds. So this is a step beyond where I'm saying, hey, I'm actually offering you something for me to come in and teach a class. And that's taken a long time to get to where I really feel comfortable. Well, I don't even know if I feel comfortable doing it, but I will do it because I know the value of my 45 minute, you know, stories that sell class. And I believe in it. And I also have, you know, enough experience teaching and with audience and all of that to feel like I can go and ask people that. But I also know a lot of people are gonna say no. Or a lot of people are going to ignore me. And I need to get up my own courage to do that. And I thought it was kind of funny that I was recording this podcast today because those are the feelings that I'm having around my next level of this. Where it would feel really comfortable for me to call, you know, message someone and ask them to be on my podcast or to come into my group or even into my mastermind. I've asked people to do that kind of stuff, which is why I feel really confident to give you those strategies but I haven't ever put together a masterclass of my own and offered people for me to come into their groups. And that feels more like going out on a limb and really owning my value and my magic. So just to tell you, you know, I have my own edge and it's important to know what that edge is and to meet yourself there, but then to have a strategy, to have an action that you can take that will help you you know, stake a claim in this new uncomfortable portion of yourself in the, in the comfort, in the outside the comfort zone place. You got to do it. it. It's like if we just think about it, you know, obviously that doesn't work and that just creates more resistance. So I encourage you to do one of these things. I would love to know when you do it. Message me on Instagram, she underscore rise podcast. Or if you already follow me at the Jaya Rose, you can message me there, both on Instagram. And um, I'd love to know, are you going to reach out to people? And the reason I didn't really dive into this, and I'll just say briefly, it's so important, like I was saying, actually, I was saying at the beginning, you know, to grow your, your um, social circle and to grow your collaborative circle because there are people out there who are doing things that you want to do and it will inspire you. You know, it took me a long time to grow a new friend circle in the online space because I don't have any of the same friends that I used to have. And it's just because I'm not doing the same things and I outgrew those relationships and that's okay. Of course, it was painful along the way, but I found my place for myself in a place for a while where I kind of had nobody. I'm like, I have so many contacts and people online, but I'm not really friends with anybody. And more recently, I've made friends with a few women and they are doing big things and we encourage each other. I know that I inspire them and they inspire me. And it is so rewarding and incredibly valuable. And I will tell you that one of those relationships started because I asked her to be on my podcast. So this is really, really huge. I hope that you will take some of this away, that you will get out of your comfort zone and take action on at least one of these strategies 
and just see what happens. At the very least, you'll heal those feelings of abandonment and those feelings of needing approval because that's what it's done for me. And that is beyond anything that you could equate to business. You know, that's beyond anything that's just value in terms of monetizing something. That is deep healing. And I love that that is in conjunction with this. So let me know. And if this was valuable for you and you have a soul sister, anybody in your life who you feel like would benefit from it, will you do me a favor and just grab the link and share it? And if you ever want to go to the actual blog page where the She Rise podcast is hosted, because those links are actually easier to share and there is a page for each episode. It's really nice, really easy to um, look at the show notes and look at the links and all of that. So you can just go to SheRisePodcast.com and that will take you right to the newest episodes and all of the archived episodes as well. Okay, so thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time. Always remember, when you move, everything moves.